My name's Helena Hughes. I'm an air traffic control officer based at Swanwick, working for Nats. I work Luton and Thames radar. Uh, in my spare time, I'm also a CPLIR and I've been an instructor since 1996. Whenever there's an infringement of controlled airspace, even if it's just a minor one, my initial responsibilities are to provide separation from that traffic to any other aircraft I'm working. Under normal circumstances, if I know the intentions of traffic in my airspace, I can use a separation of three miles and 1,000 feet vertically. If I don't know what that traffic's doing, I have to increase these minima to five miles and 5,000 feet. If I'm already busy, having to make such unpredictable manoeuvres can have a great safety impact on not only the aircraft closest to the infringement, but following traffic behind it as well in the sequence. Sometimes it's necessary to even break traffic off final approach because we have an infringement, we don't know what it's going to do and that's the safest course of action to take. Following an infringement, if separation has been maintained, um, a controller is immediately taken out of position in order to file the necessary reports. However, if separation has been lost, that controller is then deemed to be temporarily suspended while an initial investigation takes place which can be quite a concerning time for the individual involved. Pilots can help us a great deal by using their transponders, particularly if it has altitude reporting. If we see a primary contact on the radar, we assume it's outside controlled airspace and behaving as it should, and we will continue to send aircraft airliners over the top of that traffic. If the traffic has a transponder that's reporting its altitude, then we have that extra level of reassurance that it is indeed where it's supposed to be. Another really useful thing are the listening out squawks. Um, for a pilot, there's no real effort. You select the appropriate squawk to the region you're flying in and listen out on the appropriate frequency. Um, as a controller, this is a great benefit because we know that if we need to get in touch with you, you're there and we can use the Mode Sierra data to actually get the call sign of your aircraft. And this has helped stop very many infringements. We can target an aircraft that looks as though it's heading towards a control zone boundary and say, if you're doing that, you might want to think about turning a little and avoiding. And as I say, a number of infringements have been stopped that way. I'm a GA pilot myself and have been an instructor for many years and I know a lot of people are quite nervous about talking to air traffic. We're not there to try and catch people out, we're actually there to help. I think I can put my hand on my heart and say that a control would much rather speak to someone and sort them out rather than fill in paperwork after an event has occurred. If a pilot has infringed controlled airspace or thinks they may have or is even unsure of their position then the best thing they can do is as quickly as possible get in touch with the nearest air traffic control unit or if they don't know their position then D&D &D on 121.5 are always there to help. 